We have been looking together this week at some of the uh, these final psalms, these last five psalms uh, found in the, the book of Psalms. And uh, they're all about praise. Every one of them begins with, uh, with a praise or a hallelujah to the Lord. It's God's hallelujah chorus, so to speak. And we've looked this week at why we should praise Him. And uh, we've seen all already so far four different reasons to praise Him. And all of them make sense. The one we're going to look at today doesn't make as much sense to us at first. So let's come to that one in a moment. Remember and review, uh, we're praising Him because He is trustworthy. Uh, he can be relied upon. He never lets us down. Uh, even though at times experientially, it might seem to many of us that He does let us down. He doesn't give us what we expected. Things didn't turn out the way we hoped. And yet we find long term, as we look back on our lives, we have proven His will for our lives, as Romans chapter 12 talks about. We also praise Him because of the fact that He is providing for us. He is our provision. He meets our needs. He brings us that which we truly need. Not always what we think we need, but His provisions are all there, always there for what we truly need, including His provisions for uh, times that are, are tough, times that aren't going well. He is there for us. Then we also found that we, we give Him praise because he is a sovereign, is in sovereign control. Isn't it a wonderful thing to know that God sovereignly controls all things? At times we might say, well, that, that doesn't seem right. I mean, why doesn't he let us have a little more latitude, uh, let us do our own thing? Why, why should we be dependent upon the, the providence of God? Yet if we think about that for even one moment, would you really want a God who is not in control? Would you want a God who could fail? Who, who, who has plans that could be thwarted by the devil or by us or by anything else? What kind of God would it be that, that could not control his own universe and things could slip through his fingers? I, I don't want a God like that. I trust you don't either. Matter of fact, that would be a horrifying thought. But that's not who our God is. He is a God who is sovereignly in control of all things. And, and as Exhibit A here is Israel. He handpicked Israel for his people. And he chose them sovereignly. And then we also saw that he is, we praise him because he's a God of salvation, both temporal and eternal. He is the one who delivers us from the, the issues that we face in life. And he also delivers us from eternal damnation. He is our savior and he is our rescuer from our sin. And so why wouldn't we praise him for that? But now we come to a fifth reason to praise him. And that is not one that we necessarily jump up and down about. And that is we praise him because of his judgment. In Psalm 149, verse 6, he says this, Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute on them the judgment written, this is an honor for all his godly ones. Praise the Lord. Now, as we read those words, we're, we're already concerned that we're praising God for doing something that we don't necessarily like, to God to bring judgment upon those who have rejected him. But we have to, to realize that, that this war, these, uh, pray, these judgments that are coming are not without warning. A matter of fact, in, in 146.9, as we turn back there for just a moment, he says, but he thwarts the way of the wicked. So we already have been given a heads up that the Lord will not allow the way of the wicked to continue forever. And then in 147, verse 6, he says, the Lord supports the afflicted. He brings down the wicked to the ground. Now, at first, we might not like the idea that God brings judgment upon the wicked, but think about it. If God did not judge the wicked, then the wicked would get away with all the sinful things they're doing, including their, their inhumanity to, hum, to other human beings, their wickedness, their awfulness. And so the Lord will not allow them to get away with that. He warns them, and they cannot be righteous without the Lord. And so when he, when he comes here, he talks about these different ones who have turned their back on God, who have tried to do evil and awful things, that the Lord does not allow that to go on forever. Sometimes, like in the book of Habakkuk, uh, we, we chafe a little bit because we think the Lord ought to step up sooner and deal with these people that are, that are going astray. Uh, but as 
God taught Habakkuk, our timing is not always his. And he has a plan, a sovereign plan, even when we don't know about it. And so the Lord does bring judgment upon the wicked. And so he says in verse 9, he says, this is an honor for all his godly ones. Praise the Lord. So even in the judgment over the wicked, our Lord is sovereign and the Lord is to be praised. That without his judgment upon wickedness and wicked people, there could be no righteousness in the, in this, on this earth or in heaven above or in eternity. Righteousness is, requires judgment upon sin. And so recognizing that, we give him praise even in the judgment upon sinful people. <laughs> 